we're looking at installing the Zuno battery into this Ryobi 48 volt lead acid brushless mower I've had for probably going almost four years now uh, batteries are weak it's been four years uh, baby and abused them all at the same time trying to keep them charged but uh, I'd run them down if I had to uh, just for your this is the uh, RM 300 e it's a 30 inch uh, no roller caster on the mowing deck um, but uh, yeah that's what we're looking at doing it's got four 12 volt lead acid uh, sealed cells underneath we are going to remove the seat just to make it easier in and out. Um, we have had this apart once uh, to test the batteries. They were all still balanced within each other. So I kept running them knowing I was losing capacity and top end power, but it's been working for me since uh, the entire time. Um, so we'll remove the seat. We're gonna remove this pan here along with this back piece here. Uh, first and then we're probably gonna end up removing this uh, panel here which covers your uh, motor controllers and other electronics and stuff um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart it's fairly simple you just got these Torx drive screws throughout um, not too many of them really and then of course the uh, two bolts on the seat there and an electrical connection so I'll get after it and we'll get to that point. All right, so you get it tore down, the seat's taken off. There's your seat mount pieces there. Um, there's the four uh, lead acid sealed batteries making up 48 volts, four times 12. Um, you can see I came in here and did some testing early on, wrote some numbers down. Um, but yeah, uh, got it all pulled apart. We've got our uh, this is the main input from the series battery here um, and then you've got this is our main input to the mower itself uh, we've got a tap here that was for the charge circuit we've pulled that off and on the back of this this was for the charge circuit here that's what pulled the whatever voltage from the charger this came with this here is some kind of check where did it go oh it's a uh, controller here so it detects whether uh, there's power coming in and then can switch off the the, uh, the mower or not so this is a kill switch basically once you plug the charger in it kills this here I'm not sure about just yet uh, I think it's some kind of thermometer uh, thermistor or something in there but because uh, it's right in the middle of the pack which if it's monitoring voltage or whatever which it should be able to do from the main the main source so I, I'm assuming that's a because uh, that would be well it's and it's not even terminated other than it might pull ground somewhere else but that would be half battery pack for voltage but either way um, pull that off and I'll probably check out a schematic or find out what's going on do some research on that and then uh, we'll get these batteries pulled out so you'll see that uh, quite a quite a difference there compared between the two so rather excited to get this in all right, update. Put two boards under there. I've got a spacer between them. So, and then uh, it's uh, mounted in there so it won't move. I did zip tie the hell out of it actually, but <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. And it's, it's in there pretty good. And as we can see, almost half the space of the four batteries, just a little bit over on that back end right there. But uh, this is what we replaced here. So a good amount of weight gone, uh, at least half my weight, uh, most likely, roughly. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at now. Just gotta do the connections up and uh, see where it goes from there. All right, next day, uh, Friday, after work. Uh, got it working last night. Um, just did some quick wiring checks to make sure we had it set up right, go over the wiring here. What we've got, this is, I think I might've shown it earlier, but uh, it's in there tight. It's not going anywhere. Board's underneath to hold it in place, all fastened in place. Found out we've got a 100 amp, whoa, 100 amp, it's upside down, but a 100 amp fuse 
for this big old system. Um, out of the battery, um, into the uni box, and then we've got it uh, going through the fuse, and then this was the battery. These are the battery terminals uh, for the lead acid. I did have to file out the uh, terminal holes a little bit to get them on the bolts, but it really wasn't much. Got that set up. And then the wiring here to go over. So this is the unit that comes from the back of right here, the charge port on the lead acid system. Um, and this has to be connected still, uh, or this is, it's got to sense the 48 volts for one. Um, this also senses if you plug into charge, then this right here relay or whatever this is here would allow, would, would break the ability to turn on the ignition. So that's all got to be in place for that to work. So that's this relay box. It's on top of the lead acid batteries. This here was in your back uh, cowl here as uh, the charge port. I did wrap it up with some tape because it does have exposed terminals. I'm probably going to put that in a box and seal it up a little bit uh, so it just doesn't contact anything. And then the last thing was this here. I'm pretty sure it's just a thermistor. Um, it's just to check the heat on the batteries. It runs without it plugged in. Uh, I decided just to leave it. There's no harm done by it sitting there, just in case it ever, the system goes and checks for, for temperature or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's our wiring right now. It's left the seat alone. I'm not gonna bypass that. It works fine for me. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, get this all strapped up together um, and then start working on putting the plastic on there. I did do a quick run outside, a couple of them. Uh, I didn't run the motors uh, or the, mo uh, the blades. I've got to clean the tops out on those and I've got gravel everywhere so I didn't want to turn them on. Uh, but a full full run, uh, full throttle run, only pulled the highest I could see was 17 amps with the motors. I can't, I can't even think it would be over 25 amps. So I'll never see the, the max continuous 100 amps, let alone all the bursts uh, ability that this, this battery gives. So going from 50 uh, amp hours to 90. So we'll get it all put back together. We got it all bundled up as far as the wiring. Uh, what I did here is it is kind of tight right there from the pan to the top of the battery. This connector fits under there, but I could not get the fuse holder to fit under there between the two. No big deal. Just route that there. I'm going to cut out a little bit of a notch right here so that I can reach that for emergencies. If anything ever happens, I can just lift the seat and then disconnect it. And then uh, that comes down, wraps into the Uno box on the one side. And then I just wrap the Uno battery pigtail around the box to pull that wire in. Let's see here. Let's just throw that right here. So this is just wrapped around that. It'll stay in place. Zip tied this in here. And I decided to put the, uh, the charger in. So it's on board now. Just zip tied in. It's solid. Nothing's going to move. Zip tied the extra cable there for the charger. And we're ready to put it together. All I have to do is... Oh! I'm just going to show you. I was able to get the port to go in there. I just unscrewed it, used the washer and this original screws that came with it. And I was able to put the NOCO uh, AC connector on there. So it's uh, charging from the original charge port too. It doesn't look pretty, but now it does. Anyways, I'll get it back together. All right, I'm going to use my Camry here, security camera, and make this the easiest thing. Just download the video from it, sync it up with the audio of this. This will be a run. I'm done with the install. It all fit. I even put the onboard charger in. Happy about that. I think I showed you the plug earlier too. Anyways, we're on. I'll do a couple of runs here so you can see. And, uh, and uh, we'll see what this records. Here we go. 27 amps there at the highest. Another run. Ooh. 17, 23, 21, so so far the highest I've seen is a 27, let's see what reverse does, 
that's not going to be a full power anyways. 23. Now it's time to run the blades. Let's see, 19. I wonder how I got that 27. Okay, let's see. We'll put this down to two and a half inches. I don't have a lot of grass, so. All right. right at the end there just after I shut the blades off that's interesting and 17 well that's pretty much it I can't turn tight enough to 39 34 there we go 34 oh okay Let's try that with the blades. We'll go faster. Anyways, I had fun. So there you see, perfect uh, upgrade for the RM300E. Looks like we hit 37, hitting the corners hard with both motor and the blades going. That was all I could get. About 37, 38 I think was the highest, 40 amps uh, roughly, in case we missed a peak. Anyways, there we are, got my quick disconnect like I mentioned I'd do and then we've got our charge port here and just open that up and plug it in and it's all done all back together deck finally cleaned I probably haven't done that for a couple of a couple of years at least so happy with the install thanks for watching